Hello YouTube, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today we're going to take a look at a Linux distribution. And yes, as you can see, I am doing this on a Windows computer. Mostly because I'm a Hyper-V specialist. And this channel is more for Windows administrators. So I thought I would just show it to them. I just know that I'm going to get a lot of flack from Linux users that I didn't do this with FMPEG. It's not that I don't know how to use FMPEG. It's just I prefer to do high def recording with the tools I know. So let's take a look at this really cool uh, Linux distro that uses KDE. Uh, it's called Super X, and it's actually by a friend of a friend um, who makes this. And it's very nice looking. It's supposed to be a more polished KDE. Without further ado, Let's take a look. All right, guys. So SuperX is, like I said, a KDE distribution based off Ubuntu LTS 14.04. Um, so let's take a look at the install process. And then we're also going to take a look at what it looks like. Now, I'm going to try to see if I can get a remote session going because while we're installing this we'll have to deal with a small console while we're installing but let's take a look so this is a Linux GNU distribution if you don't know what that means um, it basically just means that it's a Linux kernel with GNU um, let's see here it's gonna boot with a GNU utility so even though it's called Linux it's mostly GNU which is a recursive acronym for GNU is not Unix. So far, very visually appealing. Um, I really like that. So, I really like KDE. I've been a fan of KDE for a long time. Um, you know, I do use Windows for the most part because I do too much business stuff, and I'm a Windows MCSA, so it just makes sense that I use it. So here we go, just like in any other installer, we can go in here and we can actually use the live installer to probably browse, do basic things. Uh, but unless we need a special type of flash drive that holds um, data onto it, we're not going to be able to do much in here until we get it installed. So we're going to install SuperX. I love the, the default wallpaper, very nice. Uh, it comes up with the same installer that uh, Ubuntu has. Uh, we're going to choose our English uh, language is English. This is the 64-bit version. Uh, we're going to tell it to use the entire disk. And we're just going to go install now. We can also set it up with an LVM uh, or an encrypted LVM. And we're going to pick our area. It found me, so that's correct. And I love KDE. If you guys haven't used Linux, which is what this kind of video is mostly aimed towards, is people who haven't used Linux before or are mostly Windows users, as most of my fan base are Windows users, um, this, this is one of the more elegant and more modern looking uh, desktop environments. If you're new to Linux, you really don't want to care about whether you're using Ubuntu, Debian, or anything like that. You're more should be more concerned about um, what desktop environment you guys are going to be running uh, because that's really what makes the distro to most people. That's really what people are talking about when they say, like I've seen lots of people that say, oh I like Linux Mint, but they're really just talking about the cinnamon desktop environment that they like. So if they used any distro they could get pretty much the same uh, require my password to log in. They're gonna get pretty much the same the same experience. It's really what they what they're it's really the desktop environment that makes or breaks a distro or what somebody likes. When you get into the more advanced things, you might decide that you know you like Ubuntu or you like Debian's app get, or you might say, no, you know, I really like uh Gerge, or you might say that, you know, I really like um I really like Pac-Man as a pack package manager and I want to use Arch Linux, you know, so that's something that you want to decide after. But the first thing as a Linux user that you should decide is what desktop environment do you like? Is that XFCE? Is that GNOME 3? Is that, you know, is that Cinnamon? Is that KDE? Is that uh, LXDE? LXFC? Um, so that's what you got to decide because that's what's going to make your distribution seem faster, lighter, more fe uh, feature friendly or feature packed, uh, more user friendly, etc. It's not ever going to be what distro you're using. 
because the distro has to do with the underlying operating system. So I'm going to pause this video and we'll come back. Welcome back guys. So I did try to remote into it to give you a full screen interface. Uh, looks like there's some stuff missing in this distro that might have been needed to do that. So we're going to have to go with a smaller console or I won't be able to finish the video. Um, so let's take a look. So here we go, we logged in. It's got a cool little avatar that it default shows. It's pretty quick to log in for a KDE distro. Um, if you guys don't know, KDE is one of the more heav heavier, uh, resource heavy anyway, uh, desktop environments. We have our menu. Instead of a KDE logo, he's put this kind of app menu launcher. Uh, by default, it comes with Chromium, which is a nice touch. Most distros just have Firefox. Uh, we can launch that. Now uh, it will be a little bit slower because it's in a VM and I didn't bother using uh, VHDX. Um, looks like we've also got GIMP installed, GIMP 2.8. GIMP loads so fast in Linux compared to Windows. Uh, we've got Chrome, as I said, we've got Firefox. So if you guys are Firefox users, that's going to come pre-installed. Uh, let's check out software updates here. And let's check, uh, check out the, uh, the App Center. And I was told it's using Mint um, Software Center. Now it's been so long that I actually forget. Hmm. I actually forget what Mint Software Center looks like. But um, as you can see, this is the software updates that need to be applied to your system. There is a sl slight system update, but look how small this is compared to Windows. Very small files. Uh, we're not going to install those now. Uh, when you come into your app center, you get different options for things, and this kind of gives you, this is one of the reasons why Linux is a lot more secure, is because most of the apps that you're looking for, whether it be VLC, or, you know, maybe it's a, a browser that you like, um, that was kind of weird that that didn't come up, I'm sure it's in here though, hmm, maybe the software center is still, uh, got some bugs to work out. You can still go and install things though with uh, command line. Uh, well, there we go. Okay, yeah, it was just taking a bit. Um, so VLC is already installed. Um, so you guys pretty much get the idea. It is a very nice uh, desktop environment. If you guys want to see more, let me know, guys. Um, this is basically what you get for a if you wanted to eject different media. Uh, this is your wired connection. This is your clip bin. Um, it's kind of like uh, the uh, the clip manager in OneNote, if you guys are Windows users. Lots of different cool software that's available here. Um, make sure you guys do go and check this out. If you guys want to go and get this distro, you guys can find the distro. Um, uh, it's on SourceForge, but the actual website, I'll just give it to you here, is superxos.com. Uh, it's a very good distro from what I've seen. I'm going to be probably downloading it, installing it myself to kind of play with it more on my own system. But that pretty much gives you an idea of what you guys should expect with uh, Super X KDE desktop um, environment uh, with Linux um, Ubuntu. So guys, let me know what you guys think. Um, do you guys want to try this out? Have you used Linux before? Please rate and subscribe and thank you for watching.